Every year, the US 911 system receives about 240 million calls and emergency dispatchers are the very first responders. They translate a call or situation within seconds in order to provide actionable instructions so police, fire, or medical teams can respond as quickly as possible. It's an incredibly demanding job. A lot of time is spent listening to terrified callers in their most desperate moments, and it takes a certain kind of person to survive the stress. Hopefully, you never have to dial 911, but if you do, here are a few things you need to know. Here are the five top tips for calling 911. Number one, Dial 911 and take a deep breath. Staying as calm as possible is crucial. It's easier said than done, but the operator on the other side of the call is trained to follow a certain procedure to collect the information they need and get you help as quickly as possible. It may feel exasperating to have to repeat yourself or get interrupted when you're stressed, but the best thing you can do is to stay calm and collect yourself so you can respond as clearly as possible. Remember, they want to help you. Number two. Have important facts ready. There are certain details the dispatcher will need. The three most important details are, what is happening? Is someone hurt? What you need? Police, fire, or ambulance? And your location, your address, cross streets, and major landmarks or businesses. Don't panic if you're not entirely sure of your location. If you are on a cell phone, 911 can probably track you. However, any details you can provide may help with the accuracy of your location. Number three, stay on the phone. Don't hang up until a dispatcher says it's safe to do so. If you disconnect in the middle of a call, call takers are required to call back to determine if the emergency is still taking place. If no one answers, police will be dispatched to that location. In some cases, the dispatcher may stay on the phone with you until help arrives. Number four, be patient. It may feel like 911 takes a long time, especially if an emergency prompts the call. Call takers enter information about your call while simultaneously alerting the appropriate emergency services. Allow them time to get all the facts. All the questions being asked are not delaying help. Number five, follow directions. The call taker may direct you to provide emergency medical aid if necessary. Listen carefully to what they tell you and if you don't understand, try to relax and ask them to clarify what they mean. Getting their directions right can be important and potentially save a life. The 911 system might give you a busy signal. Sometimes there are more calls than call takers and dispatchers can handle, especially during emergencies that a lot of people witness, like fires or car crashes. When you have a very public incident going on, sometimes you'll get a busy signal or recording that all lines are busy because we're receiving hundreds of calls. You can be assured that our call takers are working as quickly as possible to determine the nature of the calls and decipher which calls are duplicate and which calls do not pertain to the public incident. The other fact that needs to be stressed when calling 911 is the questions being asked are extremely important and while you think they're ridiculous or unnecessary, they're not. All questions asked are pertinent to deciding what and how much help is needed. While the call taker is gathering your information, their partner is dispatching the call to either police, fire, or EMS. The responders are receiving all the information in real time. When you call 911, you don't have to say anything to the call taker if you are in the middle of a situation that could cause you harm. In some diary emergency situations, a 911 caller may be unable to speak. For example, if an intruder is in their home or they are choking or having a heart attack, call takers are trained to ask yes or no questions a caller can answer with the push of a button. We'll tell them to push a button if they are in the city. If they don't push the button, then we know they are in the county. If there is a domestic situation, we'll ask, is he still in the room? Does he have a weapon? Are drugs and alcohol involved? These are just a few of the tactics we use to get emergency services to you. If you are unable to even dial 911, our center does accept text messages as well. Today calling 911 from cell phones is the most common way to report an emergency. Roughly 80% of calls are made from a wireless phone. We're often asked if you can call 911 without service. Yes, you can. You can call 911 without service even if you forget to pay your phone bill or you only have an old phone with a current plan. All wireless phones can call 911. The only issue is if you get disconnected, the call center you were speaking with has no way to call you back. As a reminder, if you have an old cell phone and allow your child to play with it, Please remove the battery. If you do not remove the battery, they will call 911. You should never dial 911 for a non-emergency situation. Instead, dial the non-emergency telephone number for your area. 
A non-emergency incident would include property damage, vehicle break-in, or burglary when the perpetrator has already fled the scene, vandalism, car accidents with no injured persons, and theft. Please do not call 911 for minor illnesses or injury, an injured pet when the power goes out or if you just needed information on an event happening in the area. The non-emergency phone number for Washington County is 240-313-4345. Another issue with dialing 911 are what we call misdials. In other words, you accidentally call 911. Please, please, please stay on the line to let us know if it was accidental. If you disconnect, we have to continue to call you back and eventually send police to your location to assure you in fact do not have an emergency. You will not get in trouble for accidentally dialing 911. Our call takers will merely ask you your name and location for our records.